This is Foodscaping Utah and we're growing organic apples and pears. And today we're in our uh, backyard foodscape, uh, which is primarily orchard with some uh, vegetable beds. We've got a couple of vegetable beds uh, and then a row of espalier fruit trees. Uh, but today we're gonna uh, look at our Braeburn apple tree, uh, which is uh, has been in the ground now for three years. So it's, it's producing a, a decent crop of apples now. Um, and one of the most common pests for apples and pears is codling moth. And according to uh, USU Extension, codling moth affects the, the uh, whole fruit growing region of, of Utah. What happens is uh, the adult moths lay eggs right onto the apples and then those eggs hatch and the larva digs its way into the apples. So when uh, people say, oh, my apples have worms in, worms in them. What they're actually talking about is the codling moth larva that's in there. So um, when, when apples are grown commercially, uh, usually they're, they're sprayed. There's a, a spray routine. Uh, spray begins uh, towards the end of May uh, and goes all the way throughout the growing season. So uh, instead of doing that, uh, we're gonna do a little experiment to see if we can uh, bag the the apples and the pears so uh, last year we we um, started with a, a couple of bags just brown paper bags and they didn't work out too well they were hard to put on uh, so this year we're going to do an experiment where we use two different types of bags these are Japanese apple bags so they're designed specifically for this uh, so they should work pretty well uh, but in my opinion, they're, they're uh, time consuming and, and difficult to put on. Our other option, we also got some of these cheap um, organza bags, and these are five by seven, uh, very un inexpensive, order them on Amazon. Japanese apple bags we found on Amazon also. But, so what we're gonna do is um, use both of them and then also leave some apples uh, totally unprotected and see if uh, the calling mouth is actually active and does affect them. Ideally, we wouldn't have to bag the apples at all. All right, so let's take a look at how to uh, use these Japanese apple bags. I like to open them up like this, just with my hand. And what it has is it's a double layer, has wax paper on the inside, and then it has a slit. And to use it, you slip the slit on the stem of the apple. So let's try this one right here. So we're gonna put this slit. And then you fold it up. And there's a wire right here that you use to, to secure the bag by crimping it on. As you can see, I haven't really perfected doing it. We're gonna give it a try. If you also smash in some leaves. And that's it. But as you can see, it takes some time. It's kind of hard to do. I, I suppose you'd get, the more you did it, the better you'd get at it. But these organza bags are night and day difference. It's a lot easier to put on. We'll do that on this one here. So you just slip it over the apple, pull the strings. So that's a lot easier. Uh, one potential benefit of the organza bag is also that the, the fruit is still getting sunlight. So it'll develop color without having to remove the bag. Um, so we got most of this done earlier before we shot the video, but we are a little bit behind. This is usually done uh, at the, towards the end of uh, May um, before uh, the codling moth is too active and starts laying eggs. Uh, it's the beginning of June now um, so as you can see the the fruits getting a little bit bigger I don't I don't like to put the bags on when the fruits really small because it won't hold up as well um, but the plan is to, to let these go um, hope for the hope that they protect really well for the codling moth but what we'll do is we'll we'll shoot the second half of this video uh, when we're harvesting and we have a good idea on uh, how it turned out for the apples Okay, so it's the 1st of May now of the following year, um, and the apples and pears are in bloom now. 
Uh, so it won't be long before we have to start thinking about protecting for codling moth for this year. Uh, but we're really excited to share the results of our experiment with you from last year. So um, out of 104 fruit, uh, 69 of those were bagged. And of the 69, 99% of them uh, did not have any uh, worm in them. So there was only one that uh, had a codling moth larva. So out of the unbagged fruit, um, there were 73% didn't have worms, which means 27% did, which ended up being nine pieces of fruit. Um, so there wasn't a lot of codling moth overall. Um, and I think part of that is because we thinned it really well and there hasn't been a buildup of codling moth on our trees at all yet. Um, but uh, nearly all of the bagged fruit uh, didn't have any worm sign. And the one that did, that could have been that we didn't get the bags on very well, or it could have been um, that the egg was laid before we had a chance to get the bag on. Either way, we're, we're thrilled uh, with the results and we didn't see any difference between the organza bags and the Japanese uh, apple bags. So um, we're really excited about these organza bags. They're inexpensive and they go on really easy. And this is actually one that we used last year. So we can use them year over year. And if you think about this, uh, if you compare it to a spray regimen where you have to start spraying towards the uh, beginning of June and you're looking at spraying all the way here in Utah, at least uh, through August into September, um, and in a conventional spray, uh, that's gonna be spraying about every two weeks with a couple of breaks, a couple of gaps in there. Uh, with an organic spray, uh, that would be weekly you're spraying. So um, it, it may seem a little bit time consuming to put them in on, but you put them on uh, with the organza bags, they're easy to go on. Um, and the color of the fruit develops really well because the light can go through the bag. So, um, when you're thinking about bagging fruit, obviously if you had a giant uh, a fruit tree, apple or pear, it would be a lot more challenging to bag all of the fruit. Um, but it, one of the things that, that we do is try to make sure that we keep the, the tree really small through pruning. Um, so in the description, I'll put a, a link to our video on how we keep uh, trees, fruit trees small with pruning. Um, a small fruit tree is just a lot easier to take care of when it comes to pruning or uh, protecting or harvesting. So uh, thanks for watching Foodscaping Utah and grow your own.